Now our next two guests will have a common thread. We'll talk about substance abuse treatment in the community. We'll, before we get to Brenda Isla from Hazelden, we'll catch up with our old friend Van Ellison from St. Matthew's House. Welcome back. It's been a while, and it frankly, has. that's probably okay with you. It's nice to lay low occasionally. <laughs> yeah. so. Let me ask you specifically about the new St. Matthew's program you're very excited about, mm -hmm. and we need to learn more about this. It's the addition of women into your uh, sub your, your rehabilitation program, right. which I guess we didn't realize had been just for men mm -hmm. and hard to understand what the difference is or why it's so complicated to add women to that mix. Why wouldn't everybody be treated the same? Well, early on when we established Justin's Place as a drug and alcohol recovery program, we focused on doing a men's program. Um, our, our approach has been like a therapeutic community model, not a traditional um, psychiatric uh, based or more clinical model. and a therapeutic community, you typically go with a gender-specific program. You keep men working with men hmm. for accountability. In early addictions recovery, people tend to want to be uh, distracted by the opposite sex, by romance, by anything to distract off of their personal responsibility for recovery. So we launched that program in 2010 just for men. That went really, really well for um, for all these years now, and last year in February of 2013, we launched a women's component to Justin's Place as well. Now, is this a residential where I go and I stay, or I, right. can, I can come and go during the day and the it's night? It's a year-long residential program. I stay there. Correct. Okay, we're talking mm -hmm. about airport pulling room. Correct. Up by the courthouse. Yeah. Okay. So you just had your first graduating class that included women. Correct. It's yeah. a milestone. It was very exciting. We um, we started with a small program. We believe in. We don't want to be the Walmart of recovery. We don't want to be the Walmart of care for the less fortunate. What we want to do is have a small operation so that we can know everybody. Um, in a community-based model like this, really personal relationship and accountability is, is key, is pivotal. And so if we have too big a program, so in, in this last month we graduated um, six women and 14 men, all of them with a year clean and sober, doing mm -hmm. very well working in jobs in the community now and really being restored to healthy functioning. Are the drivers different for, for men's addictions as opposed to women's addictions or is it all the same? Well, in the population we deal with, they're very, in kind of recovery circles, they talk about somebody having a very low bottom. They really hit the bottom. You know, when somebody's still got a job, they're doing well, their wife wants them to come home, that's somebody that's not coming to St. Matthew's house for help. Usually by the time they come to us, they've blown through all their money, okay. all their family, They're all gone. their friends. So okay. all they've got left is what they walk in the front door with, and that may just be a pair of shorts and, a, and some flip-flops. So that low-functioning population, a lot of times, when they're coming to us, the men are thinking, how do I get my life back together? How do I get a job? How do I start functioning in society again? Oftentimes, the women that we're dealing with, how do I get my kids back? Okay. How do I deal with the loss of the of having broken all my relationships. So the relational dynamic is more intense and a little more complicated with the average woman we deal with. You had, uh, or you still may have plans to expand to uh, to Hendry County over by LaBelle. And you were telling me before we started that you got some pushback like St. Matthew's House experienced in Bonita Springs. Yeah. Uh, what were you planning to do out there? What's the status of that? Well, we originally had put a hotel under contract, a hotel that's um, been struggling for a number of years, and the idea was to take that and use that for housing for our men's recovery program. We wanted to remotely locate Justin's place for men. Mm -hmm. um, being in a remote area with less environmental influence and early recovery is really mm -hmm. a plus for these guys. Um, less distractions, less temptations to leave. Um, we'd still like to find a remote location. Mm -hmm. we, we're still very committed that the need is so great, uh, on any given day we're turning away people for both our men's and our women's programs, we just don't have the space. If we could remotely locate the men's program, uh, finding a ready-made building like the hotel is, mm -hmm. was just a, would be a wonderful thing for us. Um, we don't need specialty facilities, we're talking about housing men and keeping them occupied in recovery type activities during the day. So the LaBelle project remains on the on a back burner? Or? We're still looking for a solution. Um, we've, 
st matthew's house for twenty six years every time we talk about expanding anywhere there's always been a pushback from the neighborhood fear anxiety once we've been somewhere we find that the neighbors love us you're part of the solution not the problem absolutely like to say let me ask you about the impact of the economy it would seem to be more employment opportunities it would seem so maybe some of your clients might not be as likely to come to your door we're seeing people that are coming to the shelter side of things they're bouncing back quicker now back at the bottom of the economy people couldn't find jobs so somebody comes into the shelter getting a job and getting on their feet was was very complicated and very hard that to be motivated they had to be diligent and it was tough now we're going back to almost like the boom days where entry-level employees are very desirable and so a lot of our guys are finding it very easy to find work and is that is that good for the program that's is that good for their treatment oh it's well this more the shelter population is looking for jobs immediately okay and it's great for them for the recovery guys they're not having an outside job for about seven months so they're focused just on they they couldn't work anyway they can't work at this point in in the early phases now when they're transitioning out after they've been with us for a while they've gotten some good foundational skills under their belt then they go look for work and now we're finding every single person we're graduating or moving through our program is finding work and that hasn't always been the case there's going to be less and less affordable housing in the community as we yeah. move forward that new developments are being allowed by the county commission mm-hmm. to drop their affordable housing components is this going to make an impact on your world it's going to dramatically impact us uh, we see um, we believe that the affordable housing numbers are going to be more significant as the market is going up right um, we're seeing that the bottom end is being left out and some it of is. the older affordable housing uh, apartment complexes are now aging out and they're going free market so we're going to see a dynamic that's really going to impact families dramatically that single mom the the highest risk factor for somebody living in poverty is to be a single mom and those people are going to be left out pretty dramatically to be continued van Ellison, st matthew south thanks for your time next up brenda isla from hazelden we'll be right back after this